The title of my message this January of 2023 is Let's Get Lit. How many of you think said that yesterday? <laughs> Let's get lit. And there's people who aren't in church today because last night or yesterday at some point they said, let's get lit. And of course, what they meant was they were going to pour alcohol down their throats or they were going to uh, uh, smoke some green stuff and uh, they were going to do something to make themselves kind of get crazy, get wild, get out of it. But I want to talk to you today about how you and I in 2023 ought to get lit, ought to get lit. Let me tell you what I mean. Matthew chapter 5 verses 14 says, you are the light of the world. Do you have a clue yet? You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Lord, we thank you today, God, for your great mighty word, Lord Jesus. It keeps us grounded in the truth, God. In a world full of lies, we are grounded in the word of God. And we thank you that we can open the word and the Holy Spirit will be with us to enlighten us to reveal to us, to show us, to embed this word into our, our souls so that we can be more like you, Jesus. We thank you for that, Lord. Touch us today, God. In Christ's name I pray, amen and amen. Well, we certainly live in dark times, wouldn't you say? Uh, we were talking, Brenda and, and uh, Diane and I at the table back there, about some of the crazy, weird stuff that's going on in the world and what some of the people of the world are starting to say is correct and good and moral and right and how they've how they've mischaracterized what love is and uh you know how that sometimes you just look around and go how can people live like that how can they believe like they believe well the answer is is that they're walking in darkness that's right and they're they're they've been deceived they're walking in a lie right and and so they don't know any better, and so they need light. The world needs the light of Jesus now more than ever, amen? This world was a dark place when that babe came in a manger, right, uh, and, and became the light of the world. John chapter 1, the Bible says that Jesus is the light of the world. Hallelujah. He came to bring light into the world, and you know what? That light still needs to shine now more than ever. It may feel like it's hard to let your light shine when the world is so dark. Amen. You ever feel that way? Like things are so bad, it's hard to be a Christian. It's hard to speak up. It's hard to be an example. It's hard to do the right thing when everybody's doing the wrong thing. And, and now you're, it's not just different as a Christian. You're not just different. You're the enemy. You're a problem. The way you think and live is a problem. And, and so you may think it's more difficult to let your light shine when it's dark like it is now in the world. But I came to tell you today that it is in the darkest of times that it's easiest to let the light shine. You hear what I'm saying? The light shows up when it's the darkest. Come on. Sometimes you don't have to do much. Now, if you're in a lighted place like this and you light a, you light a, someone on the back row lights a lighter, the people in front will never know that the lighter w was uh, turned on, right? You'll never know that Joe's got his phone light on right now. Turn around and look and see. You had no clue because the light within the light, you don't know it. You can't recognize it. But if we turn the lights off and it got real dark in here and Joe turned his phone on, everybody would recognize it because in the darkness is where the light shines. Come on. It is in the darkness. Hallelujah. Light has its greatest impact in the darkest of times. You may be praying, Jesus, bring back light to this world. But notice what Jesus said. You are the light of the world. Oh, didn't he put it on us? He did, didn't he? John chapter 1 says Jesus is the light of the world. Well, you know what? Jesus was the light of the world, and he still is, but he's shining through you and I, amen? It is through us that the world is going to see Jesus. They're going to know Jesus. They're going to see truth. He expresses and shows his light through people just like you and I. It is you and I that are going to bring light to this world in 2023. That's why I say, church, in this year, we ought to be determined to get lit, to light ourselves up and let the world see what the truth is about God's word. Amen. 
While they can be full of the spirits that come from the alcohol store down the road, the liquor store, you and I can be full of the spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. We can overflow with the wine that comes from God himself. Bless his name. You can be a torch today. You know, how many of you, when you, when you hear this scripture, you are the light of the world and uh, uh, let your light shine before men, you think of a candle, right? That's kind of what comes to your mind. Or you think of a flashlight. And a few years back, Joe preached a sermon out of this same chapter, and he, he used a, a flashlight at that time. All those are good, but, but I want to kind of mess up your brain a little bit and think of this in terms of what a light would have been during their time, perhaps, and, and that is a torch, because I think a torch is cool because I think of Indiana Jones like climbing through the, you know, chasing away the bad guys. And he's got a, he don't have a flashlight or a candle. He's got a torch, right? So, so just go with me on this. You and I need to think like we are a torch going into dark places to show forth the light of his truth and love. You are a torch. When you walk out into your world in this year, you ought to think of yourself like God is carrying you and you are a torch being burned up for Jesus, exposing light in dark places. Amen. You are a torch sharing his truth and his love. I want to talk about that for just a minute because if you're going to burn, if a torch is going to burn, it's got to be lit. It's got to be connected to some source of fire that helps get it burning. Can I tell you what that is today? It is the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2, it says, When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting, and there appeared to them tongues as of what? Fire distributing upon them. And they rested on each one of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit was giving them utterance. Can I tell you that we live in a time in the church where the baptism of the Holy Spirit has become optional to a lot of people? It's like, you know, maybe you want to believe in that. You don't have to. Maybe you want to, maybe you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You don't have to. Let me tell you something. Jesus said, don't leave Jerusalem until you get this power, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He said, when it comes upon you, you're going to go out into the world and be my witnesses. So let's put two and two together. If God is going to make you the light of the world and you need to get lit by something, you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And it's so important. God said, don't leave until you have it. Come on. I believe today that if we're going to touch the world for Jesus Christ in this upcoming year, a huge part of it is going to be a people that are filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit and are moving in the gifts and the power of the Holy Spirit. Can you say amen? See, the Holy Spirit is not just Jesus in you. It's the power of God upon you. It's the power of God in your brain to make you think like you should. It's the power of God in your mouth to make you speak when you should and shut up when you should. It's the power of God in your feet to make you get up when you need to go. There are a lot of Christians who didn't go to church today because they didn't have the power of the Holy Spirit getting them out of bed. Come on. The power of the Holy Spirit upon you is what's going to help you be the torch that you need to be in your world. And you've got to get lit. Can you get a, a picture of that day? They're all together in one accord. They're praying. They know about the promise of the Father. They're, they're just, they're there, they're waiting, and all of a sudden, everything begins to change. And can you just see like the flame of God, the flame of God, and all of these unlit torches? They're, 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 they're just made up of some kind of substance, maybe weeds or, or, or tree branches or something. I don't know. And, and they're just, they're not lit yet, but God himself just goes, and one light, and two light, and three lights. Oh, come on. Can you, can you catch a glimpse of that today? What if the Holy Spirit moved through his church and began to light us on fire so that it wasn't just burning in this building, but when we left and went in dark places, we took that fire with us. We need the baptism of the Holy Spirit now more than ever. I am Pentecostal at heart. I believe with all of my heart in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I believe that we can speak with tongues. I believe we can prophesy. I believe we can interpret tongues. I believe. A torch needs to be lit. If you ain't been lit, you need to get lit. You need the Holy Spirit to come upon you. Not only that, the, the amount of light that the flame produces is directly related to how hot it burns. So let me ask you, if you're full of the Holy Spirit, how hot are you? 
How hot are you burning? Let's be honest, because sometimes we walk through the world like we are a little lighter or something. You know, like we're, we go to work like we're a lighter, right? And there ain't, there's, we're just a matchstick. We're barely holding on. Even the slightest little puff might blow us out, you know, for the day. And like we get up and we're like, I've, I've always said, you know, I, I get up every day trying to be kind and good because the Bible says that the fruit of the Spirit is kindness and goodness, right? But sometimes the world just won't let you, will they? <laughs> sometimes they're just honoring and me. And, 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 and you go out there and you're just, maybe you just, you're barely hanging on. It's just a little match with a little flame on it. And, the, and it don't take much to blow that out. And you're like, that's it. I'm done with all of you. I'm going to give you a piece of my mind, even though I don't have much to spare. Can you say amen to that? How hot are you? How, how hot are you burning for Jesus? You know how to make the flame bigger? You got to fan it. Our sister's got a fan over there. Oh, and she's fanning the flames. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can you, can you, can you uh, just picture the fact that in the spirit realm, you, you need to fan the flames? Amen. You, you, God is the source of the fire. You have to fan the flames. You have to, number one, fan the flames, which means stay close to Jesus. Put yourself in spiritual places where you interact with God because you know how uh, change happens to the child of God? It's because of our proximity to God. When we get in his presence, his glory comes upon us. When we get near him, we start to be like him. And uh, Have you ever been around somebody a long time that has an accent and before you know it, you're, you're kind of talking like they do? Have you ever noticed that before? Like you, you start talking like a British person if you hang around them because it starts to rub off on you, right? You start, if you're around country folks, you start to say y'all and you get a little, you get a little country, right? Uh-huh. I mean, you just people rub off on each other. Can I tell you, when you hang out with Jesus, he starts to rub off on you. So when you're not acting like Jesus, it's probably because you hadn't been hanging out with Jesus. So you need to pray. You need to pray. You need to pray more than just, hey, God, give me this, 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 this. I'm done. Let's, let's see you later, Lord. I'll holler at you tomorrow. We need to pray, Lord, like, uh, God, uh, just change me, move in me, work in me. Do something in me, God. Uh, work in my heart and in my life. Work in, in my church. Let your will be done in me. We need to be willing to stay. Come on. You know, uh, it, it was uh, the, the, the guy in the Old Testament, his name escapes me, but uh, Jacob, who, said, who held on to God and said, I won't let you go until you bless me. How many of you ever played, prayed prayers like that before where you just you wouldn't get up from the altar until you felt like God was going to bless you well that's awesome that, but you know there's another kind of prayer too and it is where you won't get up until you know you've blessed God can I bless God is it possible for me to bless God I don't know the psalmist said bless the Lord oh my soul and all that is within me hallelujah we can bless the Lord praying so much that we die and Jesus gets bigger in us and the Lord gets blessed we need those kind of prayers Stay close to Jesus by staying in his word. There's all kinds of stuff to get you off track today, but the word is straight and narrow. It's the truth, the same truth that ain't changed. Hallelujah. We need the word of God. Jesus said your word is truth. Praise the Lord. It don't matter how high you jump. If you're not walking on the right road, uh, you're in big trouble, aren't you? It doesn't matter. You've got to be in the word. That word gets in you and it gives you power. Not only the word, but you need to worship God. You need to uh, acknowledge. Let me, let me just give you a, a, a good way to know if you've really worshiped God. This is a good thing. Remember this. When you worship God, one of the results of real true worship is that you are down here and God is up there. Because let's be honest, not every time we come into the presence of God or the house of God or kneel in prayer is God up there and we're down here. A lot of times we're kind of even and we're kind of telling God what to do and we don't really like how things are turning out. It's like we're, we're sitting sort of level on our own throne trying to tell God. You start worshiping God and what happens is he gets bigger and you get smaller, amen. John the Baptist said he must increase and I must decrease. That's what happens when we really worship. When you've been singing the songs, when you've been telling God how much you love him and he starts getting so big that you realize how you're not that big, you know you've been praising God. Not only that, we need fellowship today. Ain't no Lone Ranger Christians. I'm sorry. Yeah, but I got my wife when we pray together. Well, there ain't no Lone Ranger and Tonto Christians either. Can I? You were born into a family. I'm sorry. You need us and we need you. 
And, and, and one, of the, one of the number one signs that a Christian is walking in the flesh and not in the spirit is that they don't think they need church anymore. I don't need those people. I don't need to. They're hypocrites. Hey, they make this around. You know what? Just hallelujah. <laughs> There's a place of humility. It's in your bathroom right over your sink. Look in, look in that mirror and uh, you'll see a hypocrite. Come on. Your sin stinks as much as everyone else does. Come on. You got to fan the flame. Not only that, you got to feed the flame. Uh, fire needs a source. And, and the source gets consumed. If the source is wood, the wood gets consumed. It gets consumed. Can I tell you something today? You have to sacrifice yourself if you're going to burn for Jesus. Let me say that again. God's going to consume something if you burn. Come on. That means God's going to use up some of your time. You can't have every hour to yourself to do whatever you want to do and be a minister for God. How are you doing anything for God if all you do is do what you, you know, you go to work because you have to, and then you go home and you do whatever you want to do. How are you a minister for God? That means the only time you'll do any ministry is if you feel like it. And we all know ministry ain't about how you feel. Come on. God's going to have to consume some of your time. He's going to consume some of your money. Ministry is going to cost you money, even if it's gas to drive somewhere. Ministry is going to cost you some money, and God's going to say, take that money you've been saving in your wallet and give it to somebody in need. God's going to say, I want you to double your tithes and put it in the offering this week. God's going to say, I, I want you to wait on getting a new car because you're going to use some of this money to help a family member who's going through a problem. Listen, if you want to burn for Jesus, you're going to have to put your life out there and deny yourself. Oh, we didn't want to hear that. Matthew 6, I believe, and all these things shall be added unto you. I like that. But the first part says, if you seek first the kingdom of God, then all these things shall be added unto you. You got to fan the flame and you got to feed the flame. You got to give God something to work with. And you've got to protect the flame. Can I tell you something? The devil is trying to douse your flame. He wants it to die down or go out. Look what, look what it says in the scripture here. Nobody lights the, the light up and then puts it under a bushel or hides it, but they expose it for everyone to see. Now, let me tell you something. The devil would like to hide your light. He may not be able to put it out, but he'd like for you to like keep it to yourself. Maybe just keep it in the church building. If you're going to shine for Jesus, shine on Sunday in the church building. Have you ever heard people say that? Maybe, maybe work has said that to you. Uh, you know, keep your religion to yourself. Keep it in your house or in, in the church. Keep it to yourself. They're, they're basically saying, take the light that God has given you and hide it. Put it under a bowl so no one can see it because we don't like the light. Do you remember why the, Jesus said why people don't like the light? Because men love darkness because their deeds are evil. Come on. Are you hearing me? The devil wants to take your flame and hide it or blow it out if he can. Let me tell you something about light, though. You know what? Uh, light always wins over darkness. Amen. Uh, uh, we're lit up in here. We can see we got these lights and the windows. We can see each other. The devil can't bring darkness in here and shut the light off. Come on. All he can do is convince us to turn the switch off. And that's what he's trying to do is to convince you, you don't need to talk about Jesus at work. You don't need to say that on Facebook. You don't have to always read your Bible. You don't have to help people all the time. That's not your job. Take care of your own family. The devil is constantly saying, don't let your light shine. Don't let your light shine. But Jesus said, let your light shine. Come on, somebody. Oh, Satan wants to separate you from Jesus. He wants to keep you busy so you don't have time for God. He wants to make you hide the light because you're afraid, persecuted, embarrassed about Jesus. He wants you to focus on yourself and not others. Mm -hmm. Me first. There's a lot of me first Christians. Me. If I have enough time and there's any left over, I'll help my fellow man. If I have any money left over, I'll help my fellow man. If, there, if there's anything left over, as long as I get what I want first, because 
it's about me. And, you know, there, there's nothing wrong with saying this year I'm going to focus on myself. If you need some, like, rest and we all want personal growth. But if focus on yourself means fulfill yourself, that's not what the Bible teaches you. The Bible te- If you're going to focus on yourself, you ought to be trying to grow into the person who is like Jesus, who sacrifices himself for the people around him. Come on. Hallelujah. This Christianity that makes you God is not what God has planned for you. The devil's trying to get you to focus on you deserve it. You deserve to have that. You, you know what? You've been through enough. You don't need to put any more burdens on you. Come on. We've heard that from the enemy before. You got to protect the flame. You got to say, nope, I'm not hiding it. Nope, you're not blowing it out. No, I'm not making it about me. No, I'm going to go out into the world and be intentional. Hallelujah. Which means you've got to expose the flame. You got to let it shine. That's what it means, let. Let it shine so they can see it. Let it shine in front of them so they can see it. Hallelujah. Let it shine in front of them so they can see it. Are you hearing me today? You ought to be doing things so people can see what God is doing. Being intentional means that we don't just let the light shine wherever we happen to go, but that we are looking for darkness. We're looking for a situation that's bad so we can step into it and help out. Hallelujah. Have you ever uh, gotten news that somebody was uh, having a problem? Uh, and, and you know kind of them, maybe you're, you know them well enough that you give them a call and you just want to pray for them and encourage them. Or maybe you want to send them some money or do something good for them. Uh, you, there's times when you see there's darkness, there's trouble, there's turmoil, and you can say, well, you know what, sorry, not my problem. Or you can say, you know what, I'm going to sacrifice some of my time, some of my money, some of my energy, and I'm going to go over here in this dark place and I'm going to light it up. Hallelujah. I'm going to let the light of Jesus Jesus and the love of God shine in this person's situation. I thank God for the darkest times in my life that God chose people in the church and people around me to send my way to say the right thing, hallelujah, and encourage me to do the right thing and to lift me up. Some of you sit in this room today, you've said things in my dark hours that blessed me. You've done things in my dark hours that turned things around. You know, when I being in the ministry for, for a long time, I've been to a lot of funerals, helped a lot of people going through uh, death and stuff. And you always try to say things but not say too much like you know everything. And so it's, it's always challenging to try to uh, not just be quiet but don't over talk. And, and you always wonder, does it even matter what I said? Is it helping at all until my brother died and people would say things to me? And I realized it does matter. It does help. Even the smallest of gestures is like somebody saying, a piece of my heart loves you and is with you. It's so good and so powerful. And it's, it's one of those things that when you're giving it, you don't think there's much to it. But if you're ever the one getting it, you realize how big and how valuable it is. We need to be intentional about finding the hurt, finding the broken, finding the needy places and going there and lighting them up. The Bible says if you want to find God, you know where he's at? He's where the broken hearted are. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We've got to be intentional. Go to dark places and expose them with the light and love of Jesus Christ. The lost can't see spiritual things, though. You know, relationship with God is spiritual. When, when we say Jesus lives in my heart, <laughs> we know he's f- is physically in heaven at the right hand of the Father. What we mean is that the Holy Spirit lives within us. But you can't take an x-ray and your doctor go, oh, there's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> you know why? Because he's, he's in the spirit realm working through the flesh, right? But the Bible says that the spiritual things can't be seen by people who aren't born again. That's why they don't understand. They need the Holy Spirit to enlighten them so they can even begin to understand by being born again. And so if they can't see spiritual things, how are they supposed to see the light that shines within us? You know how? They got to see your good works. That's what it says, isn't it? People, you know, people, uh, people go out and they do good works and they, maybe they're feeding the hungry and stuff. And, and uh, some people will say, well... You know, you shouldn't film that or you shouldn't take pictures uh, because the Bible says that you shouldn't, uh, you know, 
let your left hand know what your right hand is doing and all this. And it's almost like people are saying your Christian works should be hidden so no one can see them. And I get when like people are kind of making a, a deal out of it to where they just, you know, are trying to be seen by men. And that's what that scripture means when it says, you know, uh, don't let your left hand know what your right hand's doing in that. It's saying if your motivation is to get the praise of men, that's not what it's about. But the Bible doesn't say that your faith is supposed to be so private no one can see it. No, it says let your light shine so that they can see it. They can see your good works. They can see what you're doing. Uh, I would encourage you that if you're going to go out and feed the homeless, take somebody with you. So they can see your good works and glorify your father who is in heaven. I would encourage you if you're going to go minister to someone in the hospital, if you can take somebody with you so they can see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. Are you hearing me today? They need to see us doing work in the flesh. They can't see the spirit realm. They can't see the love of God in your heart. They've got to see it in action. They got to see you get the car started and drive to the hospital and check in and go uh, to the place where the person is and, and pray over them. They need to see you actually do the good works. And when they do, the Bible says they will glorify your father in heaven. What does that mean? It doesn't mean they're all going to get saved. It's, it's, what it means is that they're going to know there's a God in you. Come on. I've said this before. It's so true. People can argue about the Bible. They can logically argue about the Bible and try to disprove the Bible and say that it's false and all of this stuff. People can argue over the church and religion and traditions and all of this stuff. But when you, when you are a living example and they see you living it out, it's hard to argue with that. They have to, if you love Jesus and you claim Jesus and you're living it and they see you doing it and there's miracles, they either have to think one of two things. Either you're really stupid and deceived or, or you're, uh, or, or you're uh, maybe crazy and you really believe it. You're, you're a lunatic or maybe there's something to this. Maybe this ain't fake after all. Come on. Hallelujah, Jesus. I don't know about you, but I want to get lit for Jesus in 2023. I want to burn hotter and brighter than I ever have before. I want to find the darkness and destroy it. Come on. I want to, in my world, in my family, in my neighborhood, in my community, in the influence that God has given me, I want to light up so that people can see Jesus and his love for their life. And I want to see this church burning for Jesus. Come on. I want to see this church burning for Jesus. I, I have a, just a thought to place in your mind this year, and that is that we need to bring more people into this house. Not so that we can say, look how many people we had. No. But because people represent souls that Jesus died for. Come on. I'm going to leave you with this thought. You remember the... the in the Old Testament, there was a prophet who ran across someone who had run out of everything. And uh, he said, bring all the, all the jars you have. And he began pouring the oil. And as long as there was empty jars, it kept pouring. Can I, can I tell you a little secret? The pouring of the oil, if you equate that to the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and the jars are the lost people, the empty jars are the lost people, then as long as lost people keep coming into our presence, the oil keeps flowing. If we get to the end of 2023 and it's the same folks and we've just listened to the same sermons and prayed for each other and, and we've just blessed each other, well, that's okay. But I don't think it's what God wants from us. I think what God wants to see is for us to go. He said, the prophet said, go, get all the empty jars you can find. And I'm saying to all of us today, go. Get the empty jars that you can find and bring them to me. Maybe they won't come to church, but maybe you will bless them where they are. Maybe they're not ever going to be a part of this church, but they might get saved through your relationship with them. And they will go to another church because I don't care where they go. Hallelujah. As long as they're loving Jesus and serving him, we're on the same team. Are you hearing me today? I want to see us reaching out into this world, not so that we can just get by this year, but so, so that we can give the devil a black eye. Come on. So that we can get rid of some of the darkness in this world, so that we can make an impact. Are you with me today? Let's stand together and let's just praise him today.